our identity have been very important to us ever since we were very young from a psychological perspective the social perspective the philosophical perspective and the spiritual perspective today though i will restrict myself to the dictionary definition of identity which is for example who someone is what is their name and in particular i'd like to discuss the identity of infants and toddlers who may not even have a name yet just like this child that we have in the photograph who is known by the name of her mother we know the gender the date of birth and the approximate age the united nations has mandated that every child shall be registered immediately after birth and shall have the right from birth to a name the right to acquire a nationality as far as possible and the right to know and be cared for by his or her parents now this is not a recent un charter this is from the un convention in 1989 which is nearly 30 years ago now but unfortunately we have an astounding number of 40% of childbirths in india still unregistered which leads to a lot of problems such as child trafficking child labor denial of formal job denial of bank account denial of driver's license marriage certificate passport everything needs a birth certificate now so 40% of the population therefore really remains deprived of a lot of benefits there are several ways in which identity can be asserted for example something that we own possession based such as the key to a home or a token or an id card like this or something that we know some secret knowledge for example our email passwords but the problem with both possession based and knowledge based authentication is is these they, they can be stolen or they can be shared so one perhaps better form of identification is biometric authentication biometric authentication also has a lot of other benefits especially for infants and children for example we have vaccination cards but a lot of parents of infants who are really marginalized do not really always know the value of carrying these cards but if we have a registry where all of these children are registered we can track vaccinations vaxrack which is a non-profit organization claims that more than 50% of the vaccines worldwide go wasted now that is not only a monetary waste but all, that also means that a lot of needy population whom these vaccines can really help never get the benefit of the vaccines that are actually available there are of course other applications for example preventing newborn baby swabs so we read in the newspapers often that either intentionally or unintentionally children got swabbed in the hospital now if these children's identities were somehow biometrically linked to that of their parents we could immediately find out whether or not there has been a swab identifying missing children even in the most developed economies such as the united states over 800 thousand children go missing every year which is like one child being missing every 40 seconds our country the rate of missing children is even worse so for example when you look at this child who's begging on the streets of the city the question not is not really whether or not we should help them financially but the question is the bigger question is how can we connect them back to their parents it is quite possible that the child was kidnapped when they were really young they do not even re probably recognize their parents now but if we had a biometric registry we could authenticate them and then connect them back with their parents 
then of course there are national identification programs. Now the problem with biometric authentication is, is that so far it was really unknown whether children who are really young, can we authenticate them using biometrics? Is that biometric pattern that we use, is that persistent over time? That question was unanswered. So national ID programs such as one of the largest ones in the world which is the Aadhaar program in India does not capture biometric rates until five years of age. And then the biometrics have to be re-registered once the child turns 15. But given so many benefits of being able to identify children positively based on their biometrics, we were motivated to take up the study with one of the finest biometric research groups in the world, Professor Jane's lab at Michigan State University. So we took longitudinal fingerprint study ranging for over a year with the DEI's affiliated hospital, the Saran Ashram Hospital as a partner and also NEC Corporation as, an, as a corporate partner. And we, with the help of the hospital, the maternity ward there, we could capture fingerprints of children who were just a few hours old to be able to see if we are able to get those fingerprints and if those fingerprints persist over time. These are some of our example subjects. Like you can say, see the face images are not really persistent with time, especially with, with young children. And so therefore, fingerprint was a viable option. Now the other problem is that the fingerprint readers that are generally available in the market are 512 dpi which is to say that there are 512 points or 500 points every inch now that is good for adults w would it work for infants though do infants really have fingerprints the answer is yes they do even in gestation even before they are born the fingerprints are developed it's just a question of technology. It's just because those fingerprints are so small that we do not have technology yet to be able to get those fingerprints high quality and then be able to faithfully identify the child. So therefore, with some hardware improv improvisations, especially with the help of NEC Corporation, a higher resolution fingerprint scanner was developed. And like you can see, the fingerprint of the same child on the left using a 500 ppi commercial scanner versus the newly developed 1270 ppi scanner the fingerprint quality is is exceptionally good and with this and some improvisations in fingerprint matching algorithms we were able to achieve 100 percent accuracy for all children over 12 months of age Thank you. So we are continuing this work now and even though the fingerprint reader is able to capture fingerprints at a higher resolution, we also want a matcher that can go into remote and tribal areas. And so therefore we are using Raspberry Pi based fingerprint reader again in collaboration with Michigan State University. And you can see that this is on the screen you can see some pictures of sort of a frugal innovation where we have a cardboard based fingerprint reader using a simple glass prism which through total internal reflection creates an image which is captured by a very simple camera and can be matched using the Raspberry Pi because it's also a small computer in itself. And now with the focus on children that are less than 12 months old, you can see the images that we get using this new setup for children who are even younger than 12 months are fairly good. The idea is that we would want to identify children starting right at birth. Ours is not the first effort. There have been other efforts in the past to be able to tell children apart. 
So that's a possible solution too. But unfortunately, that's not scalable. We are talking of the size of national populations. And eventually, we want to be able to get to a point where technology, both in hardware and software, is to a point where we are able to reliably authenticate everyone using their biometrics. The final goal is that let no child be deprived of the benefits that come with their identity. Thank you.